Hey everybody, Eddie J on crypto. Hope you had a great day. We've got a lot to talk about, so I'm just going to hit my notes real quick. Airbnb, thinking about accepting crypto coins. Um, cryptos are clearly decoupled from the market. We'll talk about that. We've got DOT or Polkadot that actually gave money after Ukraine created a dot address. So that's a good thing. I think it was $5 million. So that's a big deal. We have Visa and MasterCard saying, oh, not going to serve Russia anymore for a while. So that's a big deal. Doge, I think, is doing well. I don't think it's doing as well as Shiba Inu is. So we'll talk about that. I mean, I'm not, I'm not predicting any flips anytime soon. But Doge doesn't seem to be gaining any upward momentum, whereas I think SHIB will. Um, so that's something to talk about. We have Chairman Powell. People are talking about, well, is he really going to raise it five basis points or is it going to be 0.25? So I'm sitting here and I'm saying to myself, I think it's going to be 0.25. There are way too many factors going on right now to raise it to 50. You know, So I think that's going to be a big deal. Um, Cardano and Solana seem to be on this like, seesaw thing where they just think that everything's cool and they just keep bouncing back and forth. So it's kind of funny. Um, so right now, Solana's on top. I think Cardano's going to flip it again and we might see that flip for a while. Um, I think that Cardano is will eventually flip and remain, but I think for a while we're going to wind up flipping and staying, but we'll get into that and you'll understand why I think it's going to be like that. Something else to think about is Terra Luna and XRP flipping. So that's something to pay attention to. We have EU lawmakers looking at things and saying, you know what, um, maybe we should take that language out about um, canceling, not canceling, but banning Bitcoin. Maybe not such a good idea given current events and how things have been handled thus far with regard to Bitcoin versus a country's fiat. So you can see that on two sides. We'll get into that. We will get into... Um, Something on a personal note, we'll get to that later. Anyway, let's talk about Airbnb. So Airbnb, the CEO was on CNBC yesterday um, talking about, yeah, you know, actually not yesterday, today, talking about, yeah, you know, we, we're going to start looking at uh, accepting crypto because there are a lot of people that, yeah, they happen to be using Airbnb, but they will also cut deals on the side, you know, for themselves directly, and they will accept cryptocurrencies. And I think that's going to pick up. And I think that's why they're going to start looking at um, collecting cryptocurrencies as opposed to just fiat. So that's going to be a very big deal. I was speaking with one of my friends who's a property um, a property manager out in Curacao. And he was like, oh, you know, out here, it's not really a big deal. And I said, dude, you're talking about a whole bunch of people that are from, you know, from you know the European Union that are going to visit Curacao and visit areas around there. And those people are most likely used to seeing at least some crypto running around and Airbnb accepting crypto would be a huge big deal because that's what he does. He basically manages Airbnb or private residences for renting out. So that, you know, he was like, oh, you know, I wasn't thinking about that, but that is a, that is actually true, you know, because I do see transactions happen with Bitcoin. I just didn't think it was that big because, you know, Curacao isn't all that big. I said, it's not about Curacao. It's about who's visiting Curacao. You know, who's moving to Curacao or who's moving out of Curacao. So that's going to be a big deal. So imagine somebody from the Netherlands who is, sorry to get into it now, but might as well. Um, imagine somebody from the Netherlands visiting Curacao or who has property in Curacao who's trying to basically wash some money away or hide some money and pay less taxes. They're going to want to see crypto because now they can flip their money, flip that sale into crypto and see what happens. So there's a lot of things that you can do with crypto that's just going to gain momentum, you know, in different places around the world where you might expect it or might not expect it. But he sat there and he said, "Yep, you know what? You're right because I'm seeing crypto pick up in other areas. You know, Curacao, you know, down there near the islands and you can hop around different islands, you can see what's going on." So that's a big deal. So anyway, let's get into Airbnb. Airbnb doing that a little bit deeper. Airbnb is actually doing very well. Airbnb stepped up and they've, you know, donated some money to put people up, you know, that are coming from Ukraine so they have some place to stay. So for those renters, for those for those owners that are renting out rooms and things things like that, they're saying, "Well, how much of a discount are you willing to give?" 
and then they're paying whatever it is that they want so that these people don't have to worry about paying so they have a roof over their head you know so at least that's that would be one thing one less thing that they would have to worry about hat tip to airbnb now something else um if you look at the stock market right now and then you compare that to cryptos stock market's not doing so great cryptos are so when you look at that you i would tell you that you, what you're seeing is the decoupling of the two spaces. Now, everybody says that there was a coupling. I never believed that there was a coupling. I think that what happened was there was a period of time where things were moving in unison, right? But eventually those things come apart. So think about a graph with two things on it. Sometimes those lines are gonna cross and they will be together and that's what you saw. And I just think that was for a slightly extended period of time that you saw that. But then when you look at cryptocurrencies as they are now, yes, they do technology, but they are not tech companies, right? So it's, it's different. You're not, you shouldn't be looking at them as tech companies and you know traders needed to kind of see that and kind of go, okay, so these are different kind of vehicles. Exactly. They are different. They are a different kind of vehicle. So that happened. And that's actually a very big deal because when people actually saw in real time what cryptocurrencies can do in a time of emergency, right? That's what people are keying in on. So now you're seeing people jump in and say, you know what? Yeah, those things are going to be here for a while and they'll probably be here forever. So let's either jump on the bandwagon or not, which leads me to the conversation about MasterCard and Visa saying, no, no more transactions in Russia. Now, does that, happen, does that hurt the oligarchs? No, it doesn't. It hurts the regular people. But I think that if you know, the more pain the country in general feels, the more pain Putin is going to feel. He's kind of you know, removed himself from you know, his people, right? But eventually those people are going to start saying, hey, dude, it's enough. I mean, they're, they're, they're protesting. So, yeah, he's been ready to tamp down. He's been, you know, able to tamp down those protests and things like that. But there's so much going on. And there's so many people that aren't protesting but are talking about it. And that's the problem. So when you start to see that, there is a problem. And I think, I think there were miscalculations. I think there are miscalculations on both sides, right? You know, do some history, some research on what was going on in those two breakaway areas, you know, in you in the Ukraine, well, not the Ukraine, in Ukraine, um, and you might you might have some ideas, you might draw some images about what's going on, what could have been going on there, and so you see what's going on, and I sit there and I just go, well, you know, I think it all could have been solved diplomatically, truthfully, you know, a little bit of patience, a little bit of diplomacy. I think those are things that could have happened. Um, unfortunately, we're looking at events that are driving things not in the direction that we want them to be driven. Um, with regard to Doge, well, AMC posted good numbers. Now, if you remember, that was a meme stock, but now that in the United States, those numbers are going down with regard to Omicron and you know the COVID-19 virus. All those things are going down in terms of who's infected and all that good stuff, bad stuff. Um, now you're starting to see that, well, people are going back to the movies. They want to see their movies. And now AMC is saying, you know what? We're going to officially accept Doge and Shiba Inu. Does that bode well for Doge if Shiba Inu, Inu obtains equality, right? If people look at it as, well, you know, if we're accepting Doge, might as well accept Shiba Inu, right? Not really, because that adds another utility to Shiba Inu in real life. I can go to the movies and make purchases using Sheep. I can do other things. I can play games. I can look at a metaverse. I can do different things with Shib that I can't do with Doge. So why would I hold this one trick pony versus holding this other one? Yes, I am a Shib fan versus Doge. Will Doge go up? Ooh, it's been sitting at the 13 cent level for a long time. Now, when all this started, I remember it being at 27 cents. Do I think it's going to hit 27 cents again? Possibly, but I, I, when? Ugh, I wouldn't be able to tell you that because you're talking about it has to double where it is now to achieve that. I, I, mm, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little tight on that. So I'm not buying any more Doge, but I am paying attention to all these whales, you know, jumping in on sheep. 
So that's something I'm paying attention to, me and my son. Um, Chairman Powell, like I said, there's you know a 0.25 percent, a 0.25 move that you know 25 basis point move versus a 50 point, 50 basis point move. I think it's going to probably be like you know 25. Uh, just looking at it, it just seems like there's too much going on for them to do that. And we'll touch on that a little bit, a little bit again, because I have a personal note that I want to get to um, that kind of ties into that, you know, the whole inflation thing. Twitter, really cool move. Now they're making it. Now they've launched their whole, you know, MF, NFT. Launch it. Use it as as your uh, as your avatar on Twitter. That's great. It's only open to Twitter Blue members, which means you have to pay Twitter some money to be able to do that. And I'm like, you want me to pay extra money to have, what, an octagon or some shape around my image to note that, hey, that's an NFT versus I can use that same image not as an NFT? I'm playing for I'm paying for an outline? Yeah, no, nah, that's not going to be me. So, yeah. The other part is that Twitter Blue has only been rolled out in several countries, you know, in a few countries, in a handful. So it's not global, so it's a smaller launch than what you would expect. Will it grow? I'm pretty sure it's going to grow, right? It's it's a space that they believe is going to make some money and make some noise and you know grab traction. So it's going to happen. Um, speaking fast because at some point I've got to go over there and stoke the fire because you know I don't want it to go out. Um, looking at Cardano and Solana, really, that's that's nuts. Just the bouncing back and forth. It's going to wind up being, you know, I really do think that Solana is a great protocol, but I really do think Cardano is going to win because it just has so many things going on. And every step that they've taken so far has been very sure footed. When they say they're going to deliver something, they deliver. They deliver. They in, recently, I did a couple of video, a video a couple of a couple of days ago, a few days ago. Well, they're, they've doubled their bounty, twenty thousand dollars for any serious critical bounty. I mean, critical issue that they that, that's found. That's a big deal. They are making sure-footed moves, and I think there's a lot more that's going to happen with Cardano this year than it's going to happen with Solana, right? Solana is a popular, you know, NFT platform. That's great, but yeesh. Cardano's got a lot of stuff to talk about coming up this year. Um, Terra Luna battling back and forth with XRP. I think it's highly possible that Terra Luna is going to hop XRP until XRP actually sheds its SEC problem. When it sheds that SEC problem, XRP is going to shoot up. It is absolutely going to shoot up. Um, It's centralized, but I still think it's going to shoot up. So that's something to pay attention to. Um, Back to the EU lawmakers, like I said, they're you know they're looking to remove the ban on Bitcoin from the language of the bill. Now, what's more important is that they're looking to rush that bill forward. And why is that? Most likely because they saw they saw how well cryptocurrencies played into you know giving money where money was needed rapidly rapidly. I don't have to give to an organization that's going to give. I can go to that address and just give. There was a lot going on. So that's a big deal. So Polkadot, Ethereum, name the the popular cryptocurrencies out there. They were able to do this in in short order. Was money given to the Red Cross? Of course. Of course. However, comma, they were able to give money directly and actually have direct effect. And that is how the world is moving today. So that's something to think about. Um, a point that I have is we know in the United States that companies are starting to say, hey, it's time to come back to the office and all that good stuff. With inflation the way it is right now, with everything that's going on in Ukraine because of Russia, um, that energy source being a big deal around the world, maybe companies need to stop and rethink that. Not trying to be funny, but if you stop and think about it, I went out the other day, yesterday, with my daughter to pay to put in gas in my car. She uses my car too. Um, yes, she puts gas in the car. She's not afraid of pumping some gas, but you know she wanted to take a drive with dad, so that's what we did. I filled up the tank, seventy six dollars, seventy six dollars, and I told her, "Look at that price," and she gasped. And I was like, "Yeah, see." So when you go running around and gallivanting in daddy's car, that's something to pay attention to. Right? So when you look at those fuel prices, I don't care if you live five minutes from the office. Imagine I've got to get in a car, 
right? I've got to fire up the car. I've got to put gas in the car. I've got to park the car. Gas prices this high, I think companies should start rethinking whether or not they're going to force people to come back to the office, even in a hybrid in a hybrid kind of area, you know, kind of kind of relationship. Because you sit there and you kind of go, well, make people come back to the office if I lost productivity. But if I didn't lose productivity, I would rather give them an office that they can go to if they want to, but not force them to show up at an office. These days, people are working from everywhere. I run a, you know, I manage, I own a consultancy. We're all over the place, right? In terms of where we're actually physically located, number one. Number two, everybody that I work with is around the world. So you're going to make me go to an office to work with somebody who's not even in that office? We've got to start thinking about that and start making smarter moves, especially when, you know, some companies are experiencing brain drains. Financial industry, high tech industry, they're losing people to companies that are in Web3 space. You might want to rethink that because traveling to the office is a big deal. It really is, especially if my office environment wasn't really something that was ideal to me. Don't want to go there. I can do the same job right here. I've got everything. That's that's the mindset right now. So that's something to think about. Anyway, you know what? Enough about the news that's driving things and driving things forward, onward and upward. Let's look at the numbers because I think we're going to be, you know, very, very interested in what's going on there. So let's look at the winners and losers right now. You know, yeah, losers, you know, you have you have a, you have a good number of losers. But really, for the past two days, it's been winners that have been ahead of the losers. So that's something to think about, Right. And as usual, what do I do? That's right. I look at who's losing because I want to know if anything's on sale. So I always go over the loser list. I have a longer, a bigger one than this one that'll give me a longer list. So I pay attention to that. Gala, right there. Bam. They took a 5% hit, you know, in, in just a little while. That's down 5%. But guess what? It was up from 20 cents to now 25 cents. But I think they can go up again. So wait a minute. Do I buy in? Everything is lower now. So if you're still thinking about, well, is now a good time to get in? Good question. But take a step back. Compare where the coins are now. No matter what coin you're looking at, compare where they are now and where they were at their high and when they achieved that high. So if I'm looking at Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Solana, Polka dot, Polygon. If I'm looking at you know any coin, I'm going to stop and do that math. I'm going to do that calculation. Why? Because there's an opportunity for me to get in now and realize some serious earnings later on, whether it be a percentage gain or a multiple gain. That's what I'm looking at. So take that information, take it in, and start doing a little bit of math and looking at your winners and losers to see who's you know who could possibly be on sale even in this time. And start thinking about that. Uniswap, something I'd look at. You know, is there anything else here? Helium is something I'd look at. One of a few of my friends have, you have invested in that. Um, of course, I already said Gala. So those are things I would be looking at. I'm also looking at, you know, other things on the winning side to see, well, is it too high for me to get in? Those are things to think about. So near networks, up almost, almost basically almost 20%, but 18% or even even closer to 19%. Is that something that I can get in on? Well, let's take a look. They're currently at $11. The all-time high was 20. Yeah, I'm going to look at that. I'm going to, so get to a site like Livecoin, CoinGecko, CoinMarketCap, and do some research on that coin to see, well, when did it hit its high and where is it now? And start thinking about, well, what are they doing? What's their utility? And when do I think it might go back to that high? Because looking at that one, that's a good, that's actually a good project. You know, from what I've seen, I'm looking at that. Are we one of my friends or previous associates has a company where they're reselling our weave? And I'm saying to myself, that could be a good space. Think about it. They're up today, 8% stop there. They're doing basically um, saving files on the blockchain, which is kind of cool. Um, encrypted, all that good stuff, but you want to pay attention to that. See what they're doing. Do your own research. Always do your own research. Don't rely on knuckleheads like me to tell you stuff. Just excuse me. Just take that information in, put it to the side, do your own research, take information from everywhere, and 
put that all together and see what story you come up with and see if it's a good evaluation and see if it's something good for you to move on. That's what I look at. Um, looking at Bitcoin, like I said, you're looking at right now, Bitcoin is at 44,000. The high today was about 44, look at that, 44,900. That's kind of tight. So you start thinking about, well, it took a big jump here. Why? Crazy volume. Big jump here. Why? Crazy volume. Battled up here. Why? Crazy volume. It's been, it's been, every jump has been met with, has been, you know, foretold by crazy volume. It's been pushed by crazy volume. Um, not to say that small volume won't move things. You know, we don't have that much volume here, but you can see how things are going. So is it going up? Maintaining. Going up? maintaining because I've been telling you for about a week, two weeks now that things are bouncing around from here to there. And I kept saying, I think there's going to be a stair step to going up for a long time. We were below 40. Then we hit above 40. Now we're above 42.7, which was the key resistance level. And now we're beyond that with Bitcoin. So do the same research on each one of the coins that are out there. This tool right here is trading view. Trading View. So take a look at that, tradingview.com. No, I'm not paid by them or anything. I just think it's a great tool. That's just me. But think about that. Today, remember yesterday, we were at 20 out of 100. Today, watch this. Today, right now, we're at 52. 52. Last week, we hit 51, and we dropped down to 20 like a rock. Now we're at 52. The fear and greed index is starting to approach greed, right? Started, right now it's neutral. We're starting, but we're real close to greed. Pay attention to that because that means that all of these things come in and they factor out to something and they can factor it to being a bull market. They can factor it to being a bear market. Pay attention to these things because I think we're headed for a bull market. Is it going to be a straight bull market? I don't think so. I don't think anything is ever straight, but I think we're going to stair step up the same way we stair step down. So get in while you can get in. DCA, dollar cost averaging, create a plan, stick to the plan, act on the plan, keep some money on the side for those special situations, but keep working your plan. Develop one and keep working it. General overall cryptocurrency space, just look around. You know, this is up to the minute. Just look around. Right now, USDC is cheap. <laughs> I say cheap, but that's only split pennies, right? But Split pennies count. You know, when you're dealing with crypto, split pennies count. So depending on how much money you're moving, that could be a good number. Anything lower than dollar for something that's pegged to the dollar, that's on sale, right? There you go. So that's something I'm looking at. Well, it's worth right now that much of a dollar. So pay attention. Do you again? I can't stress enough. Do your own research, please. Gather information. Take it in from different sources. Make heads or tails of it yourself and then act on what your conclusion is, not necessarily mine. I know what I'm doing with my portfolio. I'm teaching my kids what to do with their portfolios, things like that. I'm just here to try to help you by sharing my journey with you. That's the whole point of this. I'm really sharing my journey with my kids and you're coming along for the ride. Thank you very much, by the way. Appreciate it. Um, looking at the, at the live portfolio... We're not doing well. It, it still sucks, but we're on an upward trend, right? So, you know, our strike price for, you know, crypto.com, which I don't know why they're calling it Kronos now, but whatever, um, is 45 cents. That's cool. That means we're down only 3.2 cents. But for Algorand, we're down 40. For, for, F, for Phantom, we're down 40. 38.19, 40. Um, down 20% on Cardano. So we're paying attention to where we are. Do I believe that all of these things are going to come up? Yes, I do. But if you notice, this is the holding wallet. This is the holding portfolio. There, are th I do a couple of different things. I have a holding portfolio or set portfolio, and I have a holding set of wallets, and I have a portfolio that I'm looking at for trading to try to capture some of that money that can be made. And I'm paying attention to what news is out there. Sometimes news does not hit when you read it. Sometimes news hits after. So the sooner you read the news, the sooner you can act on the news, the better chance you have of possibly making money or avoiding a problem. Again, 
Do your research. This isn't a set it and forget it kind of game. It's, you don't just buy it and hold it for life. You buy it, you hold it, you pay attention to what's going on. Sometimes it's a good selling opportunity. Sometimes. All right? So pay attention to that. Anyway, this is Eddie J on crypto. Thank you so much for watching. Do me a favor. Hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel. And hit the notification bell so that you know when we're dropping a new video. All right, site is coming soon. I, I believe it's going to be by the end of March. I put a date on it by the end of March. We'll have the new site up and there will be a bunch of tools and not just for managing your crypto portfolio, but also doing some research on stocks. All right. Hope you have a great day. Again, Eddie J on crypto. Bye-bye.